Okay, coming to a seated uh, position, cross legged and uh, feel free to lift uh, the skin underneath your hips, wrist on top of the knees, tall spine, shoulders down and close your eyes and uh, try to keep an upright uh, position in your, on, in, with your spine but don't uh, tense too much because uh, yeah, that will not make the breathing that will do any, easy, any easier. And uh, as you are following your breath, you are allowing the breath to be soft, but I suggest prior to modifying it, just observe it. The tendency is when we observe the breath, it slows down, it stays calmer, and uh, gradually it becomes uh, longer. Hopefully it becomes softer as well. So with the breath uh, soft, you can take a moment to prepare yourself for today's practice by dedicating it as well to someone that is close to you or to a purpose that is close to your heart. Make sure that the eyes are closed without tensing them too much. You don't want to be tensing any facial muscles. The mouth is closed, the teeth are touching each other without grinding them and uh, you are also keeping the tongue at the top of the palate. I actually encourage you throughout today's class to check in and notice if the tongue stays there. If you notice that the tongue has dropped to the bottom of the mouth, readjust. I will remind you, but at the same time I will expect you over time to become your own uh, uh, police <laughs> of your tongue. Okay, so with that in mind, I would like you to now start uh, introducing a breath hold during the breathing cycle. Actually, two breath holds. So, so far, maybe there was a, a pause or not. Now, I would like you to inhale, pause for a few seconds, exhale, and again, pause for a few seconds. Like I said, in some people, that would have already been taking place. In some individuals, though, it might not have been the case. So, if it was no present, any, if you could not detect a pause, introduce it now. But make it so soft, so short, that uh, it is very tolerable, very comfortable. For some individuals, it may even be a few seconds long. In some individuals, it might be just one second, just a very short pause. It doesn't matter. A pause is a sign of a healthy respiratory cycle. Is, uh, um, if you look at the amplitude of different uh, 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 breathing patterns at different emotions, all the emotions that you would ideally have, joy, um, happiness, gratitude, you will see distinct pauses at the end of the inhalation and the exhalation. So, if you want to breathe in such a way, you want to be having pauses. If you want to breathe in a state of anxiety, in a state of uh, um, fear, the pauses are likely to be very, very uh, short, almost uh, non-existent. And maybe check in again with your breath and notice if it is any different at the moment. If, uh, sorry, with, with your mind and notice if it feels any different at the moment. Maybe you notice at the moment that you start feeling a little bit more grounded. Maybe you feel like uh, something else, which I don't want to put words in your mouth. You, but whatever you feel, notice that it is to some extent at least linked with the fact that you have been adjusting your breath. I would like you over the next couple of rounds to start increasing the length of the pause. So you will be inhaling and holding your breath like now, maybe for a count of five. I don't want you to push yourself, I want you to build that up gradually. If before it was just one or two seconds, maybe it is just going to be three seconds now. Don't worry about the absolute time, I just want this breath holds now to become longer. And uh, as much as possible, try to avoid in the process of uh, prolonging the inhalation. Every time we are asked to manipulate our breath, what we tend to do? We tend to take a bigger breath in. This allows us to, eat, to make the prolonging of the whole breathing cycle easier, may, makes everything a little bit easier. And that's fine, and maybe sometimes we need to do that, but not at the moment. At the moment we want to keep the inhalation as long as before, 
and see if we can stretch the breath loads at the end of the inhalation and at the end of the exhalation. Check in again with your tongue, notice where your tongue is. We're not going to stay with this exercise for too long, so I um, will ask you to breathe like that for another five to seven rounds. And uh, now you can challenge yourself a little bit more by pushing the breath holds even further. You may want now to see how far can you go with your breath holds. Can you double them? You may surprise, and the reason why I think you may surprise on how easy it is for you is because now I expect that your heart rate is lower. I expect that now you are very calm, having done this very short 3 minutes breathing preparation and as a result, having very long breath holds comes almost effortless. At the end of these uh, 5 to 7 last uh, breaths, I will ask you to go back into your regular breathing. While breathing regularly, check in uh, with uh, the state that your mind is, the state that your breath is, your nervous system. Check in with your muscles. I will be, ask, I will be giving you some breathing techniques on how to relax your nervous system, relax your muscles throughout today's practice. But even on this simple uh, exercise, do you feel your muscles more relaxed? If you were to perform airstrides, do you think that potentially you would be able to get into it as a little bit easier than five minutes ago? I encourage you to keep, the, your, keep checking that throughout the class. And from there, I want you to bring the feet in front of you. You can open your eyes and have your knees up towards the ceiling. We're going to start with some uh, shoulder mobility. Usually we start with some spine mobility, but then we're going to start with some shoulder mobility. There will be some spine as well. So interlock the fingers behind the head and with the feet forward. If you feel a little bit restricted, you can have them even more forward. I would like you to turn towards one side and then to the other side. Feel free to synchronize the breath with the movement if that feels appropriate for you, or you can. Um, Maybe breathe as little as possible. I would say that this is probably going to be a little bit harder to breathe as little as possible, but uh, you know, why not? Now, the next time you turn towards the right, bring the left elbow on the outside of the right knee, if possible, and uh, from there, try to rotate your spine a little bit more. You can put some resistance on your elbow with your knee. Keep opening the right elbow further and further back. You may be feeling a little bit of stretch in your QL, even on your obliques. And like we do with most uh, um, spine articulations, we may feel a little bit of a restriction in our breath. Let's go to the second side. Now we turn towards the left, right elbow on the outside of the left knee. We are pushing the left knee and as a result we end up pushing our entire spine. We end up sending the left shoulder further and further back. Alright, and uh, release. You may have found that this brought some tension in your diaphragm, but that's absolutely fine. Now, uh, the top of the palm on, uh, the, uh, on the ribs, and uh, we bring the elbows in. Some people may find that easy, I'm not one of them. Some people may find it very easy, and you will be able to bring the knees, sorry, the elbows together, and the knees towards the side. As you see, I cannot go very far, but don't be put off. You don't have to follow my uh, demonstration. You may be able to go a lot further. You should be feeling a stretch on your um, on the back of the shoulders, where the scapula is. So one more time, for people that feel a bit confused, the top of the palm on the outside of the ribs is a bit easier if you bring them a bit further down, a little bit harder if you bring them further up. Elbows on the inside of the knees and send the knees in. Alright, that's enough. 
release. Next one, hands behind the back, fingers facing forward, elbows in. And I would like you here to imagine that you have a ball between the elbows, hug this imaginary ball with your elbows, and while you don't allow the elbow to drop on the floor, you sift your hips forward. Keeping the elbows bent, you keep leaning forward with your hips. And uh, again, you may want to avoid, um, if you find there is a lot of restriction in your neck, you want to uh, send your head forward. Otherwise, you can bring your head back and look up towards the ceiling. But I imagine some people may find this a little bit restrictive. Now, from here, knees are still bent. Bring the left foot towards the midline and bring the uh, right ankle on top of the left knee and drop the knees towards the side. And release. Bring the right leg towards the midline, left ankle on top of the right knee and uh, Drop the knees towards the other side. Release. And bring the feet a little bit more forward, straighten the knees. Feel free to walk, shift the hips even further forward. Dig your heels on the floor and pull the floor underneath you towards your lower back. Walk the feet back and push yourself back with the hips next to the hands. From there, I would like us to go into downward facing dog. Hands as wide as the shoulders, feet as wide as our hips, and then we push ourselves into a regular downward dog. As always, I would encourage you to externally rotate your shoulders, elevate your scapula so that your shoulders are touching your ears. And make an effort to, to keep wrists, shoulders and hips in one line. And then uh, you can shift your hips towards one side and the other. Keep the breath soft here. And uh, lower, if you want initially one, forearm on the floor and then push back into your regular downward dog and then the other or when you are ready you can keep doing that or when you are ready you can start bringing both forearms towards the floor and standing up. If that last variation is a little bit too challenging you can make life a little bit easier by walking the hands a little bit further apart, turning the fingers a little bit more out and slowly bring both forearms on the floor. That, that would be a little bit easier. But some of you may not need that. Maybe you can keep your hands shoulder distance and bring forearms on the floor at the same time. Try to maintain as much as possible some protraction in your scapula. It's not easy for me, but I would imagine some people are strong enough they can control this setup of the upper back. And uh, from here. Feet, feet a tiny bit closer to your hands, especially if you have tight hamstrings. If you don't, maybe you want to keep them where they are. Get hold of the inside of the left ankle with the left hand, left shoulder forward, and a little bit of extra work now for the right shoulder, which has to stay even more stable. So if you find that this is a little bit wobbly, make sure you lock the right shoulder. And here I will ask you to stay for a few seconds. I will encourage you to start prolonging the exhalation. Make an effort to make the exhalation two times as long or two and a half times as long as the inhalation. Each one count your own inhalation and checking how you can prolong the exhalation. This will give you first a metronome of for your create a metronome of your own breath. You can switch, by the way, you can go to the second side. And this metronome can be independent of what any teacher gives you, including myself. But also it will help you stay a little bit more uh, in check with your breath throughout the practice. As a reminder, try to maintain your tongue at the top of the valve, if it's not already there. 
Now you are setting the right shoulder forward, you are holding the right ankle. As I imagine you have practiced downward dog before, or three leg downward dog before, without paying attention to the length of the inhalation and exhalation. Notice, does it make a difference? Is it any easier when you do that? And uh, release, uh, then you bring both hands up on the floor. And from here, I would like you to bring uh, the feet uh, with very small steps towards the hands. Not such a small steps, uh, because I want every time you step your foot forward to bring your heel back down on the floor. Almost every step forward is half a step forward and you are leaning backwards. And notice how far you can go towards your hands. Maybe you can touch your hands with it. Uh, with your feet, or maybe at some point you have to take your hands off the floor. How is your breath? Is it effortless? It's quite common for people that, uh, uh, even more so if they have uh, um, some exaggerated kyphosis or some uh, additional uh, adipose tissue in their trunk, to find breathing here a little bit restrictive. But that's not to say that uh, Breathing softly is not a good idea, even for them. If it is effortless for you, try to keep your breath even more soft than uh, you currently are. So far, the practice is quite simple in terms of the asana, but uh, you can challenge it by adjusting your breath. Later on, the uh, asana will become a little bit more challenging, and yeah, then you may have to breathe a little bit heavier. Bring the hands behind the Calves around your upper back, elbows in, and lean forward towards the front of the feet and then back. And then forward and back. Continue to lean forwards and backwards. Continue to slide your chest further down towards your legs. And notice in this position if you can feel the inhalation stretching the muscles at the back of your body, especially at the back of your upper back. You may find that with the inhalation, your ribs expand, not only forward, and when I say ribs, I mean lungs, and that they push the ribs, but also sideways and also backwards. This four-dimensional, or 360, or whichever way you see, you see whichever way you see, movement of the lungs is ideally taking place most of the time. Those of you that cannot feel much, maybe because you have so long hamstrings and so flexible spine that there is not much going on, you may want to place your hands underneath your feet, palms facing up. And notice if now you can feel, now that you are going into a deeper forward flexion, with your spine you feel even more of uh, this uh, three-dimensional um, uh, expansion of the ribs. Forward bends is one of the best ways to experience that. Release. Place the hands on the floor. You can bend your knees if needed and step the left leg back, keeping the right foot on the outside of the uh, right hand. The back knee is straight and uh, you are staying in this runner's pose. Now, our goal here is to find a stretch for our hip flexors, and in particular our psoas. If you don't feel that, you may have to adjust your position by bringing the front foot a bit more forward, bringing the back knee on the floor. I'm sure it is, uh, yeah, you will get there. And uh, feel free to adjust your position, that's what I'm trying to say. I will give you some cues that will help you access your psoas if you're not at the moment. One of it, one of it <laughs> being to contract the a glute of the back leg, the left glute. So just by contracting the glute of the back leg you may find that. One other one is bring your spine to a small extension. So think of doing an upward dog here. So by contracting the back glute, lifting your chest, you may find that, oh yes, now I feel that there is. Of course, some of you may be in flexible enough that you may have to even bring the forearms on the floor or come into it and um, yeah and do a deeper lizard pose.
Now bring the back knee, or even better, the back thigh on the floor. I didn't speak about the front knee in relation to the ankle because I don't think that that matters so much. You can have the ankle underneath the knee or the ankle a little bit more forward, it's all good. And uh, from there, in this, I think it's a lot of the times referred to as uh, Z splits, you will come into a lunge. So, uh, I want you here to keep uh, navel in. Probably you will be maintaining some lateral breathing. If you have access to blocks and you need them, please use them. I, you need them. What do I mean by needing them? Find some support for your hands. You will see that once you find support for your hands, you probably can access more of the stress in the hip flexors. You can manipulate the spine extension a lot more, the hip extension a lot more, as you are taking some of the upper body's weight on your hands. So, whether you use blocks or have the hand on the floor, like I do here, either way it's fine. We are still trying to stretch our uh, so the psoas major of the left hip. Shoulder blades towards each other. I spoke a few times about spine extension, however, don't jump your neck, don't jump your lower back. Keep thinking of lifting, keep trying to drive the whole spine extension from the upper back although it's the hardest one to access, at least for me anyway. How is your breathing here? That's another thing that uh, we will step it up later on by um, giving you the opportunity to practice some deeper um, back bends. But even here, I want you to make sure that uh, you can breathe regularly. And uh, how do you know, for example, that I breathe regularly? Well, I can speak and maybe you want to say a few words. If you find that uh, your voice is a little bit disrupted, di disrupted, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's the right word, but you will notice that it's probably because of your breathing. One way, one thing that you want to, to do in order to ensure good breathing is not to jump your neck. So notice now that I throw my head back. Well, first of all, I didn't get so much more of a spine extension, but not only that, you see that my voice is going. Probably it's also because my breath is restricted. All right, from there release, and uh, we are gonna bring the feet a little bit closer to each other. So now both knees are 90 degrees, and uh, from here a few pelvic tilts. I like to give this exercise a lot, not only because it's accessible to most people, but also it brings some awareness in the pelvis. I'm sure a lot of you do have already a lot of awareness. But uh, once we go into deep back bends, usually this awareness gets a little bit uh, out of the way. So a few pelvic tilts here. Here, where, where should you focus? In the anterior or the posterior tilt? I will encourage you to focus on what does not come natural to you. So, if you find, if you're like me and uh, you are, uh, have a tendency for a lordosis, an exaggerated lordosis I should say, focus on the posterior tilt tilting the tailbone forward. If you are the other way around, focus on the other way, if you tend to have more of a flat lower back, yeah? Either way, focus on what does not come naturally to you. Alright, and release, we're going to close this quick hip sequence by going into half splits. So, front knee straight, and uh, I encourage usually people to go into as much of dorsiflexion as they feel comfortable with the front ankle. So, toes are up towards uh, the head, and I would like you to go up and down here a couple of times by hinging even more and resting your abdomen and your chest towards your thigh and then coming back up. So you come up and down a few times. Now, I want you, as you're moving, and you can move as slow or as fast as you want, to check in with your breath and try to make it a little bit longer. Try to just prolong the breathing cycle, extra brownie points, if you can prolong the exhalation. But uh, usually, in order to achieve that, we need to breathe slower. It's very hard to move faster and uh, slow down our breath. Maybe, I mean, I have to admit here that I'm a slow mover, but I think it's one of the reasons why it pays off to, in terms of flexibility anyway, when we move slow. We can use our breath a little bit easier. But again, I'm, I'm definitely biased. Keep sliding your front heel a little bit more forward and go as far forward as you wish. So you may want to go more and more towards your hundred, um, your full range 
or you may want to stay more towards uh, what would be like 50% of your rates. You may want to move uh, your heel for further forward during the exhalation or by, during, while holding your breath. couple of more times here, even once you're coming to your uh, full range, you may want to still move up and down. And now, find a position that you want to hold, maybe where you are now, and I would like you now to inhale, hold your breath, slowly exhale. We're going to do that two more times, inhale, Hold, slowly exhale, one recovery breath here, so regular breathing, one breath regular, and the last one, inhale, hold, 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 And slowly exhale. And question for you. Did you, during these three calls, manage to go further into your stretch? I didn't ask you to, but I would, be, I would expect that some of you did. Yeah? But maybe you didn't. Just something for you to check if it happened. Let's release. Let's uh, bring uh, both feet back. And then step uh, them left leg on the outside of the left hand, both hands on the floor, straightening the back knee and now we go and aim to find the stretch for the front of the right thigh, right, um, right uh, show us major, again we are leaning forwards and backwards, again we are contracting the right glute, remember it's the back glute that we are contracting, we are keeping the back knee maybe as straight as possible. We are lowering the hips, some of us may want again to bend the elbows, even bring the forearms on the floor, coming into an upward dog or cobra here, whatever it takes, whatever each one needs, back knee can be on the floor, sometimes coming into an easier version of, the, of, the, of a pose can allow us to access the muscle that we want. And slowly we can bring the top of the thigh if possible or the back knee, if not on the floor, and uh, we settle into this lunge, and uh, from here we try to take some of the weight on our hands. So this straight away will provide a little bit of more comfort in our breath. We we'll find it bring us some more ease, like before. I encourage you, active navel in, feel free, you can still breathe diaphragmatically with bent navel in, you just need to allow the ribs to expand sideways, yeah, and uh, from here you can think of shoulder blades towards southern, that's a good uh, starting point to keep the neck free of any pressure, you are continuously contracting the glutes, if you find at some point that your lower back or your neck is jammed, back off, you can always adjust. If you think that uh, slowly, you know, you can go a little bit further, keep looking up, keep looking back, keep looking up, keep looking back. One thing I didn't speak about before, but I find it's quite useful here in the lunges, is to be pressing the front, the ball of the front foot on the floor. Yeah? So to prevent the front hip going into a deep external rotation. It's not the end of the world if it goes into external rotation, but it gives a lot more stability in the pose if we have the from full foot, the sole of the front foot, foot on the floor. All right, we're slowly going to come out and we'll do this super easy, yet very efficient and uh, I, 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 yeah, for, in my opinion anyway, um, pelvic uh, awareness exercise. So, both knees are in 90 degrees, hopefully your hips are getting warm now. So if you tuck the tailbone under, under, also notice if you find it in, on one side more accessible than the other. 
I have seen in individuals that they were, they were able to per even per not per perform it in one side and not perform this movement on the opposite. You know, are we? How even are we? We want to, but and it's an interesting topic. How even do we have to be really to be healthy? That's another long conversation. Okay, and once you're finished with your pelvic tilts, front uh, leg straight coming into your half splits and uh, back knee bend and uh, you are in a dorsiflexion as much as your flexibility allows you with a front ankle and you are falling forward and coming back up keep thinking of uh, maintaining your chest lifted this will promote a, a, spine, a straight spine as well as the navel in coming up and down a few times And then you can slide your front heel a little bit more forward. Remember, you can aim to breathe slowly here. exhalation a little bit longer than the inhalation if you're moving forward on the exhalation it might be easier to synchronize your breath with your movement you are inhaling on the way up and then now we will perform again the three breath holds so let's start inhale hold your breath slowly exhale. One more time, inhale, hold, and slowly exhale. And last one, inhale, hold, And uh, from there, slowly release. Bring uh, your feet in a cross leg position. Find the tall spine. You can be sitting on a, a, a on a block if you wish, or on a bolster. And uh, from there, let's synchronize our breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Nasal breathing, mouth closed. Inhale. And exhale. And last one, breathing. Hold your breath. And exhale. And let's uh, close uh, the left uh, nostril and inhale from the right uh, for a count of three, two, three, and close both nostrils and hold for three, two, three. Open the left exhale for three, two, three, and close both nostrils, hold for three, two, three. Open the left inhale for three, two, three, and close both nostrils, hold for three, two, Three, open the right inhale for three, exhale, sorry, for three, three, and close and hold for three, two, three, open the right inhale for three, two, three, and close and hold for three, two, three, open the left exhale for three, two, three, and close and hold for three, two, three, open the left inhale for three, two, three, close and hold for three, two, Three, open the right, exhale for three, two, three, and close and hold for three, two, three, open the right, inhale for three again, two, three, 
close and hold for three, two, three. Open the left exhale for three, two, three, and close and hold for three, two, three. Open the left inhale for three, two, three. Close and hold for three, two, three. Open the right exhale for three, two, three, and close and hold for three, two, three. Open the right inhale for four, two, three. Four and close and hold for four. Two, three, four. Open the left exhale for four. Two, three, four and close and hold for four. Two, three, four. Open the left inhale for four. Two, three, four. Close and hold for four. Two, three, four. Open the right exhale for four. Two, three, four and close and hold for four. Two. 3, 4, open the right inhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open the left exhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, and close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open inhale for 4 from the left, 2, 3, 4, close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open the right exhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, and close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open the right inhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open the left exhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, and close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open the left inhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, open the right exhale for 4, 2, 3, 4, and close and hold for 4, 2, 3, 4, last two rounds, inhale for 5 from the right, 2, 3, 4, 5, close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, open the left exhale for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, open the left inhale for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, open the left exhale, the, the, yeah, exhale for 5, the right, sorry, 5 and close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, last round inhale from the right for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, open the left exhale for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, open the left inhale for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, open the right exhale for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and close and hold for 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, release, regular breathing, mouth closed, tongue at the top of the palate, wrist on top of the knees. I would expect that at least some of you are maybe challenging your breath but at the, uh, during this breathing exercise, but at the moment you are with an empty state of mind. You feel relaxed or slowly you, soon you will be. and your body is well oxygenated. I would also expect that if not already, very soon your heartbeat will be very, very slow. And try to get hold, or try to take a mental snapshot of the, of the state that you're in now. Also to your heartbeat as well as to the state that your muscles are at the moment. In a few minutes, uh, we will, through the asanas, our heart rate is likely to increase. The more you try to breathe in the way that you are breathing now, you will still be able to continue your asana practice without increasing a lot your heart rate. Slowly open uh, your eyes and uh, 
drop your chin towards your chest while keeping the shoulders back. Bring your head towards one side and to the center and to the opposite side. And keep making these semicircles from side to side. And maybe you want to make, you know, still keep the semicircles, but you want to make the range that you're making with your forehead a little bit bigger. Feeling the stretch in your scalings and sclerostoids, muscles on your neck. And from there you can come into a kneeling position. Blocks can be very handy here, but not necessary. I'm not going to use at this stage. And with the hands forward, I would like you to bring, you keep looking forward and bring slowly your uh, chest towards the floor. Now, if you find that there is too much pressure on your neck, I encourage you to maintain the external rotation of the shoulders. As I'm not there with you, I cannot adjust your shoulders. But one way yourself, you can know that you are external rotating your shoulders is Provided you are keeping your elbow straight, the inside of the elbow, the eye of the elbow is standing up. And this will take care of any potential pain that you may be experiencing during this exercise in the front of your shoulder. Which I, I, I hope you don't. Those of you that have blocks and want to use them can place the hands on top of the blocks. And the, or if you don't have blocks or you, you don't want to practice with blocks, you can just lift the, uh, the palms off the floor. Notice that I'm looking forward, my chin is not on the floor. That's another place that you can put the block underneath your chin. Anyway, the possibilities here are many, really, with this exercise. And, uh, you know, the more you bring your knees further back, the deeper the stretch. Notice that your breath soon, or if not already, may start getting a little bit challenged there, but that's up to you to control it. You don't control your breath, the breath will control you. So you may want to back off if you're going towards 110% of your range, and uh, maybe as a result allow, you know, by staying a little bit in an easier um, version of the pose, control your breath more, or go to your 100%, but still breathe, um, voluntarily. And when I say breathe voluntarily, it doesn't mean that you're breathing continuously. You can still take breath holds. There is no problem of taking breath holds. Maybe you can take just sips of breath. I'm going to breathe like that, so for you to hear, although that's not um, a limit for me, but it doesn't matter. So I can hold my breath and then So notice I'm focusing primarily on the inhalation. Alright. And from there, release. Okay, so hopefully you have felt some stress in your lungs, not any pressure or pain in your shoulders. Having given this exercise for many, many years, it is, in my experience, 95 at least percent of the time not sufficient external rotation in the shoulders that causes people shoulder pain. So if you experience that, maybe you need to be more careful next time you do that. I hope you didn't, of course, feel any pain. And I would like us to go into some uh, wheels. Now, if you don't want to practice wheels, that's, uh, I'm going to give you some, uh, 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 some... First of all, I will give you some progressions for wheels so that I think is something that if you cannot go into the wheel, you can definitely benefit by working towards. And these progressions are like, uh, uh, usually regressions or progressions, whichever you call, yeah, are usually harder than the full thing itself. So hands are on either side of the shoulders and fingers are towards my, pointing towards my shoulders. Sorry, hands are on either side of the head and fingers are towards the shoulders. From there, I'm going to lift my hips, pay attention to the breath. I will inhale, Hold my breath and bring the top of the head on the floor. And if you cannot go into a wheel, I encourage you to spend some time just here and then come out. So very quickly, one more time, my hands are wide. If, you, if I find that my hands are very close to my ears, I want to widen them as much as possible. If the hands are poorly positioned, things get very tricky very soon. Some people will benefit by having a strap around their elbows here. I will lift my hips, inhale, hold my breath and bring the top of the head on the floor. My elbows, I will make an active effort to keep them in here. 
and uh, if I cannot breathe, I need to hold my breath for a few seconds and then push myself up and then go, okay, like, push a little bit more the floor and come down. If that here is okay, then I can lift a few centimeters off the floor and then come down, maybe do that a few times, or just hold for a few seconds here. Those of you that can't push all the way up, good news, you can do that. In my experience, even people that can't push into a wheel would benefit from the previous progressions. Uh, regression, sorry. But uh, yeah, go up to the point that you feel comfortable. And where you are, I would like you to get control of your breath. Now, what does it mean? Remember what I said in the previous exercise. Control of the breath does not mean breathing regularly. Control of the breath means you decide when you breathe in, when you breathe out, and when you hold your breath. And in spine extensions, which is the theme of today's class, you cannot expect to be breathing all the time, at least when you are going into your deepest version. So as you see here, I can breathe speak regularly, but as you can see, that was not my deepest uh, back. I mean, I, I can walk my feet a, bit, a lot closer to my hands. So the point here is, you want to be taking some breaths every so often, come down, and then push back again. So I will be keeping an eye on you. Feel free to do any modifications you want. Uh, the purpose here is that uh, you are holding a, a, a wheel, ideally, yeah, a back bend, and you are in control of your breath. Mm -hmm. Which means that you may not stay there for 30 seconds or one minute, maybe you will, but you stay for as long as you can, and at that stage you are able to uh, take some breaths. If you get into that point, well done. Next step, create a pattern. Mm -hmm. So, I've already spoken about the sips of breath, which is a very common, uh, let's call it technique, breathing exercise that you can use. But the other one is uh, Ujjayi breath uh, with really exaggerated uh, exhalations. So, I will demonstrate that uh, and I will also demonstrate it by also uh, linking it with movement a little bit. I think people, what, the moment they start creating a rhythm in their breath, they find that intuitively very straightforward, but I will, uh, yeah, why not demonstrate, it doesn't help. So, I'm going to go into my wheel. And uh, I will be breathing with the, with the daily breath loud, not because I need to or because I suggest you should do, but because it will make it easier for you to listen to me. If I was to breathe very quietly, uh, you will need to pay a lot of attention to my belly to notice when I'm breathing in and out. So if I breathe a bit louder, it will be a little bit easier. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I suggest you breathe very quietly. So. Okay, I hope you could hear my breath and I hope you could see that independent of what movement I was bringing into my back bend, whether I was trying to um, straighten my knees and uh, uh, I was then definitely opening my shoulders a lot more or whether I was sinking my hips down, coming into what is called chair uh, wheel, I think, <laughs> I think the different names, right? but uh, I was also moving into the exhalation. It's like I told you before in the front splits, by moving into the exhalation, we usually can go deeper into the pose because the exhalation is prolonged, the pose hopefully gives us more time to go deeper and deeper. Does that make sense? If you were to think about any pose, think of any flexibility that you want, any pose that involves flexibility, what do you want to achieve? You want to go as deep into the pose as possible, but usually this takes time, especially if we are working on our limit, right? So, the moment we link the exhalation with the pause, we give ourselves time to relax the nervous system, 
relax our muscles, yeah? And as a result, take our time and go deeper. If we don't pay attention to the breath, we may end up disrupting even the movement because the change of the um, articulation in the spine because of the uh, feeling of the lungs may disrupt the movement. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it depends on, on how comfortable we are with overinflating our lungs and so on and disassociating potentially parts of our spine. Anyway, let's put that into practice. Let's try to do these prolonged exhalations. If you want to do gyre breath, like I said, I was breathing loud only for you to uh, to follow the, 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 yeah, my breath. A couple of, of rounds of that. I'm a big fan of many repetitions, but we will not get to do so many more today because we want to finish off with some more breathing. But uh, yeah, we've done maybe five or so. And this can be, you know, your last two or three. Looks very good. Keep looking down towards your fingers when you're doing a wheel. Making sure that all three corners of the feet are in contact with the floor. Knees in. I didn't spend a lot of time speaking about alignment here about wheels. I can see that most of you are fully aware. Keep noticing how the breath is... Uh, um, is uh, in check and maybe compare it depends of course on how long it's been since you started yoga especially when you go to a class that there are beginners how challenging it is for them to breathe in back bends and maybe all they have to do is start taking some control of their breath start establishing a breathing um, a, a breathing rhythm a, a rhythm in their breath Last, uh, last one, last, last wheel, I will do one more uh, as well. I will demonstrate also a, a drill that I really like and I think can help uh, the progression of wheel here, if you want to copy. But otherwise, do your last wheel and then we're going to start uh, uh, closing the class with one last asana and then some breath work. So, from there, if I'm in a wheel, one thing I can't do is I put one, the top of one foot on the floor, I press the foot, the top of the foot on the floor, I look down and of course I want to do that on the second side as well. And for those of you that are giving that a go, maybe the first step will be to just take the foot off the floor, right? And then once the foot is off the floor and it can lift, then over time you will be tucking the toes under and so on and so forth. From there, what I will ask you to do is what I consider to be the most, uh, or yeah, I think one of the most important, if not the most important, asana for uh, breathing, which is shoulder stand. We're not going to go even into shoulder stand, we're going to go straight into plow pose, but uh, I think that should be like a, a number one exercise for those that want to improve their breathing capacity. So, from there, I'm going to roll in my back and try to take my legs over my head towards the floor. If you get into that point, you may want to straighten your knees or work towards that. If you can try to straighten your knees even if your feet are not touching the floor. Notice the impact that this pose has on, well, many parts of the body, but as uh, including the diaphragm. And you can even walk the feet towards one side and to the other. You can walk one foot to one side and one to the other, or both feet to one side, both feet to the other. And from there, slowly, 
one vertebrae at a time, you can bring it on the floor, feet together, let the knees drop from side to side, and turn the palms up towards the ceiling, eyes closed. And make an effort here to soften your breath as quickly as you can. Yeah? So, of course, if you lie there, of course your breath will soften, that's, there's no doubt for that. But I encourage you to try to suppress the edge of breathing heavier and try to pretend like you are in a movie and uh, the scene is, uh, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the scene will be focusing on you and you want to be showing someone that is breathing very softly. And uh, start prolonging the breathing side. And a little bit more. And uh, from the point that I will say start till the point that I will say stop, I would like you to count your breaths, which means that you are counting an inhalation, pause, exhalation, second pause is a count of one. And you will count how many breaths you take. Let's start counting now. So, of course, each one of you will be counting your own breaths. And the goal here is to breathe as few breaths, take as few breaths as possible. It's a little bit of a competition that you have with uh, yourselves. If at any point you lost track of the count, that's fine. I suggest that you go back and continue counting from the point that, from whatever number you have uh, uh, stopped counting earlier. It is very likely that you will get very relaxed here, but that should not be a reason to stop focusing on your breaths. You may often hear me saying that the way we think and the way we breathe are very much interlinked. The moment we change our breath, our thoughts change and the other way around. So you can think of this exercise, and probably all breathing exercises, or most of them anyway, as much as respiratory exercises, as much as brain exercises. And you can stop counting now, going to your regular breathing. Notice what's your breath like at the moment. This breathing exercise lasted for three minutes, so 
in your mind you can divide the number of breaths that you took by 3 to know how many breaths you were taking per minute. You can bring your attention to the purpose that you said in the beginning of the class. Start moving your fingers and your toes and at your own time make your way into a seated position. 